So picture this. A huge amount of people are all kind of milling around, not knowing where they're going. It's chaos. And you ask the question, hey, who's in charge here? Not you, Bob. <laughs> Grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father, Jesus our Lord, and the Holy Spirit, our triune God. Pray with me, please. Lord, today uh, we come as your children. We come uh, looking for your guidance. We, uh, we look for instruction. We look for your strength. We look for forgiveness. Let us uh, see them all here today. We come in Jesus' name. Amen. So our first reading for today comes from the book of Deuteronomy. Now, Deuteronomy is a Greek word that literally means second law. Now, this is where Moses tells those masses what God had spoken through him and connects it to all the experiences and all the lessons that they've learned over the last 40 years in the desert. The end of their journey is near. And of course, I can hear somebody in the back of the crowd, you know, asking the question, just like your kid in the back seat of the car on your vacation trip, are we there yet? Well, Moses speaks here not in a, remember when God did this and remember when that happened? No, he's emphasizing here again how they are to live in this new promised land. You know, we almost never think of Moses as a prophet, but he certainly is. A prophet hears from God directly through different means and then relays those words to the people, exactly as Moses has done all these years. Well, now it's time for God to take Moses to his reward. And that's not the promised land of Israel. It's his heavenly reward. God promises through Moses that not to worry, the people will not be left without a prophet. Moses says, and the Lord said to me, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. And I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Now, there will be many prophets to come in the Old Testament who speak God's word. But here, God is foretelling the coming of his son, Jesus. He will be the one to lead people from the bondage of wandering in their sin to the promised land of heaven. The nation of Israel is established in the land promised to them, and prophets continue to speak to God's word to them. But do they always listen? Heck no. They get caught up in idol worship and seem to forget the one who brought them out of slavery in Egypt. Paul talks to us today in Corinthians and reminds his audience and us again today that an idol has no real existence. Well, we as humans have fallen into the trap of having idols in our lives, even when uh, we don't even know it. Power, riches, fame, idols of the world. We don't worship these idols per se, but they can take and do take priorities in our lives. And Paul warns us that our actions as proclaimed Christians are always being evaluated by those who would see us bowing to these idols and rejecting the words, our words, of warning to them. Why would they listen to us when we don't practice what we preach? And Paul says, reminds us, Yet for, their, yet for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist. And one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and 
through whom we exist. Not through the idols that we set up, but only through Jesus are we to live. We are also reminded by Paul, but if anyone loves God, he is known by God. This is the God of power, not the trinkets on the shelf or the $20 bill in your pocket. So now we travel back in time from Corinth to Capernaum with Jesus and his disciples in the synagogue there. Jesus is preaching and the congregation is astounded at his teaching. Now the people may have been whispering to one another that they wish they could have preaching like this every week. Unquestioningly, this was a powerful sermon. This was not the retelling of some prior message from a historically great rabbi. That was almost always the case. Jesus wasn't quoting other scholars or other rabbis. He was speaking on his own authority. Now this was something this congregation had never experienced before. And wouldn't you know it, right at the end of the sermon, Immediately, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. The demon-possessed man acknowledges Jesus as the Holy One of God. Well, Jesus responds by calling the spirits out of the man, and immediately the man is restored. Stunned. Most of the people can't believe what has just happened. Quoting or using a phrase that Pastor B likes to use every once in a while. Are you kidding me? <laughs> A scene rivaling anything from the movie The Exorcist has played out right in front of them. And now the question on their minds is, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits. And they obey him. And as expected, the news of this scene spreads quickly throughout the region. And Jesus' fame grows as a result. The power and authority of this long ago promised prophet is on full display. Jesus has spoken the words his father has given him. He has used the power his father has given him and his authority comes directly from his Father. Jesus is the ultimate authority. He is the one promised by God in the Garden of Eden, by Moses in the desert, by guys like Isaiah and Jeremiah. They are the prophets speaking only God's words. Jesus' actions, his words, his sacrifice on the cross to take our sins away and give us all the hope and the comfort that we need. Now, we all submit to some kind of authority in our daily lives, but our priority must be the ultimate authority, Jesus. So as we uh, will leave here a little bit later today, May the peace which passes all human understanding and the love of our God be with us all. Amen.